You just mentioned something and I'd like you to circle back. Um, mesenchymal stem cells for eliminating scar tissue. Tell yes. me how that works. So I think when people think of scar tissue, first off, they think, look, I got these couple of scars here. I think of skateboarding at like four and car wreck at 16. Those aren't going to go away. <laughs> like that's external. Like the, you know, the, the skin has, has moved around that. But internal scar tissue is what they really work the best for. And it's really why they work for orthopedics. Um, when we, again, back to the pericyte thing, they live on your capillaries. When we hit bone maturity, for women is typically 18, men it's 21, we lose 90% of our capillaries. Okay. And we now have 10% left. Well, we have 10% of our MSCs left, right? So now when we get hurt, my, you know, I told you I had a 50% tricep tendon tear earlier this year. Well, the, if I had just let it heal naturally, the white blood cells would have rushed there because there's more of them than MSCs now. And they can only heal via fibrosis, scar tissue. And it's a great way to keep things from getting worse, but it actually tends to cause more problems than it solves because now you got all this scar tissue that can cause inflammation and you got your body going in there trying to heal, but it's got this block. Mm -hmm. It's like if you have a pothole in the road and you just pour some cement and you don't level it or anything, you actually end up with a speed bump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. A, a whole new problem, right? So the stem cells come in and they're like, okay, we need to flatten that. We need to repave it. We need to make sure it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're going to do. Get rid of the scar tissue and guide the regeneration of, you know, in my case, it was a tricep tendon. Mm -hmm. Could be a ligament, could be a labrum, could be, you know, all, cartilage, all these different things. So it's, it's really interesting what you're talking about there with elimination of scar tissue, tissue regeneration, and then I think of it as like an added bonus you're plugging into those opio opioid receptor sites. Yeah. So you kind of have this perfect combination providing you're using enough stem cells to take advantage of that response. Yes. How many is enough? I know it depends on what we're <laughs> dealing with. It does. So let's start with IVs because the numbers on that are real quick and simple. With, with an IV treatment, if you have an autoimmune disease or a chronic degenerative, like say kidney failure or heart failure, like any organ type issue, we're going to look at what we have found is 1.4 million per pound of body weight okay. is the minimum most effective dose. Okay. So we can go higher. So if someone weighs like 100 pounds, what's that work out to like 140 million stem cells, right? So they could do 200, okay. but they would want to do at least 140. What's the downside of doing more? Well, it's not linear in the sense of like if you, she needed, that person needed 140 million stem cells. By doing 300 million, they're not going to get double the results. Okay. So it's not, it's more parabolic, like okay. I guess in the inverse way. So yeah, it, uh, it, it doesn't always mean you're going to get double the results. We've found that dose is peak. Like you're just hitting that curve. Perfect. That's right. where We really see great results. That's the sweet spot. Yeah. What's the danger of doing too little? Too little is that like you'll get partial results. Um, we had a patient just four days ago with, he had come to us last year with IBS, um, irritable bowel syndrome, right? And we've fixed all kinds of weird stomach disease. That's kind of a catch all term, right? Sure. It's like, hey, I got stomach issues. Like, Sometimes. Oh, you got IBS. Yes. There you go, right? So he, he, he just did a hundred million. He's curious. He's like, I don't know if this will work. I don't want to go too, too much. Well, he told me he'd got about 40% benefit from it. Nice. Really helped a lot. But you know, we had told him at the time, 300 million would have been ideal. So he came back and did another 200 million. So why would the 300 million, was he a bigger person? Just his weight. Yeah. Okay. He, his body weight was getting closer to 200 pounds. So okay. he needs to go so, to that higher dose. And that's just based on the 1.4 million per pound of body weight. Exactly. That's why the 300 million would have been better in his particular case. Yes. Okay. Now for joints, I don't have specific numbers. Okay. We've had to guess and play around with that. Okay. You know, we've, we've done joints with 25 million. We've done it with 50 million. Mm -hmm. We still do certain ones like wrists. We can only put 25 million. Why is that? And well, it becomes a volume thing. The oh. wrist and knees are very complex joints. There's not enough room in the capsule. Exactly. Interesting. So when we do a wrist, we found when we first got started, we would put like 25 million plus 
one or two milliliters of PRP, yeah. too much liquid. So when you have that much pressure inside of the capsule, it just hurts. Yeah, like we even found people were like, you know, we cured their rheumatoid arthritis, but we ended up like they then had some carpal tunnel issues because they had too much fluid in there. Interesting. So, it, you know, that'll go away over time, which is some simple stretches sure. and like, you know. Just it, pumping the, the, the joint capsule. Yeah, so they sure. that that's fixable. I'd way rather have you know, that than like rheumatoid arthritis. Sure. So that's what we found there. And then with knees, same thing. It's like a big hollow cavity. Yeah. You put too much fluid in there we can't do it so with the wrist we just put one milliliter of sodium lactate it's like saline solution okay with 25 million stem cells okay so for us with joints it became more how many can we put in safely without causing any discomfort so that's what we go for if you enjoyed that short clip and you want to find out more about stem cells and specifically how to avoid the seven most common mistakes that people make when getting stem cell therapy Click the link in the upper right hand corner of your screen for my brand new ebook that talks all about it. I'll also put a link for that ebook in the description down below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button before you head out of here, and I'll see you next time.